Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with the host, Dr. Brett Palmer. In this uh, episode, we'll be looking at pre-exposure prophylaxis, otherwise known as PrEP. So what is PrEP's purpose? Well, PrEP, as we said before, stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis, and it's a pill that's taken before sex, uh, so it's pre-exposure, and the prophylaxis bit is to prevent infection. And the infection we're trying to prevent here is um, the HIV infection. And uh, HIV is a virus that attacks the immune system and causes AIDS, which is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So what exactly is PrEP? Well, PrEP is a combination of two drugs, um, and the two drugs are, are called tenofovir and entricytabine, and they're combined in one pill called Trivada, although you can now get what's called generic uh, uh, Trivada, and there are different ways of taking it. Now, it can reduce transmission by 86%, but if you read the studies, you go, mm, 86%, well, what happened to the other 14%? Well, that 14% didn't you know, didn't use it correctly or didn't even open the bottle. And so it could be as high as 100% if actually used uh, correctly. Uh, sometimes people get uh, a bit of a headache um, for short-term effects, sometimes a little bit of nausea, but it's a very, very good simple pill to take. Um, and on long-term use, it can affect renal function, um, but this is in a small minority of individuals and it is actually a very good tablet. And so uh, always, uh, if you're at risk, and we'll find out if you're at risk or not, um, it is a, wor a pill definitely worth taking um, if you're having uh, lots of uh, unprotected sex or if you've ever had to take uh, PrEP before. So in short, uh, PrEP is a way uh, for people who don't have HIV but are at high risk to prevent HIV by taking a pill, uh, usually every day. <clears throat> so how does PrEP work? Well, um, so in Northern California, uh, there was a study done and they, uh, they looked at uh, just under 5,000 PrEP users and uh, not a single infection occurred during uh, over 5,000 person years of PrEP use, which is absolutely fantastic. And only six HIV uh, infections in persons taking uh, daily uh, uh, PrEP have actually been reported. Uh, and this all resulted from people um, who came into contact with a HIV strain that was resistant uh, to uh, Trivada or resistant to Tenofovir and Tricytabine. And this is um, uh, quite rare for these individuals to encounter that particular strain. About uh, six HIV infections reported worldwide. I think that's pretty uh, good. And uh, there was also um, uh, an article done in a magazine called Attitude of uh, over 100 uh, uh, people that had uh, been diagnosed with HIV in a London clinic, uh, 25 out of those 100 were taking a holiday uh, from PrEP. So if they stayed on PrEP, they wouldn't have been infected with HIV. And so does PrEP work? Yes, it does, is the short answer to that. Now, what are the PrEP indications? Well, um, who should take it? HIV negative MSN, that's men who have sex with men, and trans women who report condomless anal sex in the previous six months and ongoing condomless anal sex. So in other words, if you're having anal sex and you are not using a condom and you're, and you're a man who has sex with men or a trans woman, you should take it. Okay. Um, also, if your partner is HIV positive and is not on antiretroviral therapy or is not on a viral load that is suppressed, then you should take it. Okay. And there are, there are many, many different factors. And so it should all be, always be done on a case by case basis. If your partner is from uh, the African community, for example, you may be at risk of a HIV infection, so it's worth taking PrEP. If you've ever had to use post-exposure prophylaxis, it's worth taking PrEP. If you've ever had an anal infection of gonorrhea, chlamydia, um, it is worth taking PrEP. Okay, um, So there's a whole wide of individuals with who should consider taking uh, PrEP that are not taking PrEP. And especially if those individuals are in high-risk groups, uh, for example, uh, people in uh, the black community. Uh, so if you're at high risk and you're in the black community or you're a man who has sex with man or you're in trans community, you really need to think about taking uh, PrEP. Um, so there are lots and lots of list factors um, and I'm not going to dwell on this particular slide very long. It just shows you uh, the extent uh, in the, and this is the British HIV Association uh, guidelines. It's a very, very big uh, table here. Um, but if you fall into any one of these categories, you need to consider taking PrEP. Okay, it's better to take uh, PrEP uh, now than to uh, having to deal with a lifelong HIV infection. So, um, 
we're going to have a bit of a game now. Who's at greatest risk? So if you're a medical student or a medical professional, uh, this is uh, for UK data. And as you can see, you've got options um, for five, six, uh, seven options here. Um, so you've got seven options here, all UK uh, men, Black African men, MSN, put them who you believe is in the highest order of prevalence. OK, and now you want while you're discussing that or while you're thinking about it, pause this video now. And if, you, if you've just unpaused the video, uh, here is the answer. And so as you can see, if you're a man who has sex with uh, another man and you live in London, uh, your the prevalence of HIV is 135 in 1,000. So that's actually uh, quite a high prevalence. Uh, if you're MSM, uh, so a man who has sex with men uh, in, elsewhere in the UK, it's uh, around about 58, 59. If you're a black African woman who's heterosexual, uh, your risk is 42 per thousand okay and um msm in england and wales sorry not in london so that's the one that's not in london it's 40. so if you're a black african woman in for example um, uh, southampton for example or bristol or anywhere in the north of england you are at greater risk of hiv than a man who has sex with men in those cities and that's an important real as it's an important because so a lot of um, people in the UK uh, are actually being disadvantaged uh, by their sexual health services. So if you're a black woman, you should actually be encountering uh, be uh, getting in contact with sexual health services and considering taking uh, prep. Very important. Um, so does it affect contraception? Short answer is no, it does not affect contraception and contraception does not affect prep. Uh, PrEP in pregnancy, um, it's fine, it's absolutely fine. Lots of HIV positive people who are on uh, those drugs, which are the same drugs as PrEP, because PrEP is effectively a HIV medication, uh, their children, uh, babies are absolutely fine. Is PrEP okay in breastfeeding? Uh, short answer is yes it is. I'll leave you to pause and read that um, slide uh, by yourself, it's absolutely fine. Uh, in terms of PrEP side effects, well, short term is actually uh, none. There's usually no side effects whatsoever. You occasionally get a bit of um, headache and weight loss in the first month, um, uh, but otherwise it, it tends to go away after about um, uh, a, a, a month or so's uh, use. Uh, if, you, um, uh, if, if they're too bad, you can obviously stop the medication uh, and those side effects will go. But they're very, very short term. They're very, very light. And I've tested taking uh, PrEP myself. Um, and it's absolutely uh, fine as, as a drug. In terms of the long-term effects, it can affect kidney function. That's why you need uh, regular uh, blood tests uh, well, once a year uh, to check your kidneys. And you also we check your kidney function before you actually start as well. And so is there any PrEP interactions with other medicines? As a general rule, uh, very few medications interact. Um, and so normally the answer is no, but it's always worth um, uh, checking. Um, however, if you are taking PrEP medication, stay away from NSAIDs, okay? NSAIDs are non-steroidal uh, non anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, things like ibuprofen, naproxen, this type of stuff. Um, so you shouldn't take NSAIDs um, if you are on uh, PrEP. Uh, they should best avoid it. Okay, take another form of uh, painkiller like uh, paracetamol, for example. Um, obviously, if you're having condomless sex, there's a risk of other sexually transmitted infections, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, hepatitis. And so I would always recommend that you wear condoms in order to lower your risk of these other infections. Um, uh, but otherwise, you know, uh, this is one of the reasons why we also advise people to test uh, regularly in terms of every three months you should be having a sexual um, health screen. So how do you take uh, PrEP? Well, um, you can take it daily and that's for anal intercourse or vaginal sexual intercourse. And that ensures a protective drug level uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You don't have to plan on taking it, you just take it every single day. Um, and it, it'll be fine, okay? You don't have to plan things out. You don't have to give any advance notice. It's all fine. 
If however you think you may be at uh, risk of HIV and you're planning to have um, anal sex, you can just take a double dose. Um, and anyone can start off on a double dose and then go on to single uh, dosing uh, once a day, um, especially if you're at risk of um, anal sex. Uh, vaginal sex, you're not really covered until um, you've had seven days worth of tablets. Okay, and this is purely due to uh, blood supply uh, and getting the drug levels up either around the vagina or around the anus. Um, uh, in terms of uh, for anal sex, you ideally need to take four or more daily doses each week, and that gives general all-round um, uh, protection. Um, and as I said here, for vaginal sex, uh, you should, just, should ideally uh, take it every day uh, if you can. So on-demand uh, dosing, and that's when you just take it uh, two to 24 hours. You take two pills two to 24 hours before you're due to have sex, and then you take one pill every day until you're 48 hours clear of sex. So if you just have one episode of sex, it's called the 2-1-1 dosing regime. Unfortunately, females can't use this method uh, because it doesn't equate, um, it doesn't apply to vaginal sex, it only applies uh, to anal sex. Um, so here's an example. Uh, and so if you're planning to have sex um, on uh, Friday, you take uh, two pills. Uh, so if you are planning to have sex uh, late on uh, 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 Thursday night uh, or early Friday morning, you take two pills on the Thursday night, uh, at least two hours, but ideally 24 hours before sex. And then you take one prep pill um, uh, the day after and another prep pill the day after that and so you're two hours uh, clear. Uh, on this particular schematic some people would say oh well if you've had sex on the Friday surely you should take it uh, until Sunday and I would say fair enough then do that because that's uh, knowing your two pills clear of the sex event is a damn sight easier uh, to remember uh, than trying to plan it out hour by hour. Um, if uh, you're having a very busy uh, sex life, uh, then obviously take your two pills on uh, Friday, one pill on Saturday, one pill on Sunday, and then the last dose uh, two days after the last uh, sex. Okay, so at your first appointment, uh, you'll be asked if you have any types of symptoms of a HIV infection, uh, of acute HIV infection. You can watch my HIV videos uh, if you want to know what they are. Uh, you will be given um, a rapid test for HIV uh, and you'll have a full sexual health screen. A pregnancy test if required, for example, if you're a female, and obviously um, uh, a urine dip and then a test for um, uh, you. Uh, UPCR, and that is just um, if if they do a urine dip and they find protein in your urine, then they'll send it off uh, to have a look to see what the ratio between uh, pr uh, protein and creatinine in, is in your urine, uh, and then you'll be given usually uh, three months of prep uh, medication. Um, while you're on uh, prep, you should then come back or should be given a test kit to do a HIV test one month after starting prep, and you should have a sexual health screen every three months. Uh, and that ideally should also include the hepatitis C, uh, but in some countries there's actually a shortage of actually uh, hepatitis C kits. Okay, uh, obviously a pregnancy test every three months as well, and then you should also, um, if you're uh, able to have it, uh, hepatitis B and HPV uh, vaccination. I know this is a worldwide uh, format, so it very much depends on one country you live in, whether you're going to get the HPV and hepatitis B uh, vaccination. Okay, uh, when it comes up to a year, you then have what's called your yearly uh, PrEP bloods, uh, and that will include a full sexual health screen again, uh, including bloods for hepatitis B, C, and also to check your kidney function. Um, and that's also done when you first um, uh, have uh, prep bloods done right at the beginning and that's then it's repeated every single year uh, those same blood tests and just to make sure your kidneys are fine and dandy. So when can you not use on-demand uh, dosing? So if you're female and you are having a receptive vaginal uh, sex uh, you can't have it also if you have hepatitis B okay because um, hepatitis B you need to be taking your treatment on a daily basis and you uh, just can't use um, on-demand uh, dosing. In terms of missed pill rules, if you've missed one or two pills occasionally, this is fine on a daily regime. Um, 
uh, you don't stop prep just carry on once you remember um, uh, drug levels uh, can still be high enough to protect against HIV and if you're missing several doses then you need to talk about your clinic uh, for, for support if you have any uh, queries about missing too much uh, prep phone up your um, uh, your doctor uh, or visit the sexual health clinic after a telephone call and they will consider giving you post exposure prophylaxis never take more than one uh, double dose when you start prep and you only need a one double dose um, at the start of your course when you're starting with uh, uh, prep so it's no more than seven uh, pills uh, a week um, if you miss with on demand dosing if you miss the pills completely uh, you still take a double dose after sex and continue daily then contact your nearest sexual health clinic and they will consider giving you post exposure prophylaxis chances never take more than one uh, double dose when you start prep and you only need a one double dose um, at the start of your course when you're starting with uh, uh, prep so it's no more than seven uh, pills uh, a week um, if you miss with on demand dosing if you miss the pills completely uh, you still take a double dose after sex and continue daily then contact your nearest sexual health clinic and they will consider giving you post exposure prophylaxis chances are you'll probably be, be given it So with on-demand dosing, if you miss a pill um, completely, uh, still take the double dose after sex and continue uh, daily and then immediately contact your sexual health clinic because they will probably give you post-exposure uh, prophylaxis. Okay, it's better to, uh, to take it than uh, not to take it. And the earlier you start post-exposure prophylaxis, if you have um, buggered up on your doses, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, more likely to work the earlier you take post-exposure prophylaxis. Okay, And so they do say it's prescribed up to 72 hours, but it seems to be more effective if you started within 24 hours. This is post-exposure prophylaxis. Okay, And so if you are uh, given post-exposure prophylaxis, it's a 28-day course, take the whole course, you do a HIV test at the end of it, and then you just restart your prep which is pre-exposure prophylaxis and then you do another HIV test uh, one month later. How you stop prep well if you're doing uh, continue daily um, for seven days um, so if you're doing the, con the continuous um, prep regime uh, you just continue for seven days uh, until you're seven days clear from your last uh, vaginal sex. If you're taking it on uh, exposure um, on an uh, on-demand uh, method you just continue for two more days until after um, your last um, anal sex, okay? In terms of the future of PrEP, well, there's a, a different form of uh, Travard coming out called Discovy. Um, it's not, it's licensed for uh, PrEP, but it's not quite uh, commissioned, and it won't uh, be for uh, vaginal uh, sex. Uh, it'll only be for um, anal sex. Uh, there's also a risk of uh, one kilogram of uh, weight gain uh, over uh, 48 uh, weeks. Uh, there's also uh, depot injections. Uh, some reports have said they're better uh, than Travada. Some have said they're worse than Travada so it's a question of the the evidence is still being uh, accumulated and there's also vaginal rings uh, these uh, are still being waited to be approved um, uh, by the European Medicines Authority these will tend to be found probably more in countries um, uh, uh, where access to medicines are in short supply um, but they could very well make their way uh, to Europe over time so these are some of the websites I've used uh, to put this uh, episode together and I'd like to draw your attention to the uh, last one which is ibase.info. If you go onto their website a lot of this information has been pulled from their guide um, because they do a fantastic easy to read uh, prep guide uh, and I advise anyone uh, to get that guide and read it cover to cover. It's a very very short uh, quick read. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and uh, take care. Goodbye.